my talk down to about 20 minutes. Um, I'll try to keep my talk down to about 20 minutes so we have plenty of time for questions after. But just jumping back into the philosophy, a um, couple of important things to point out that are super critical to us. So I get asked all the time, Richard, what is your idea of clean beauty? Because it's so broadly used in the industry right now. And um, unfortunately, it's misused because people that call themselves clean beauty companies or brands uh, really miss the mark. As far as we are concerned, clean beauty is formulating without any harsh chemicals, make them as clean as you possibly can, have, have the ingredients list minimalistic, have um, no other sort of additives to improve you know, the viscosity or things like that. It should all come from really clean bases, natural source bases, clean preservation. So we, we really focus on that. And, and that's kind of where our, one of our founding philosophies dating back you know, well over a decade. The other word there next to that is clinical. What does that mean exactly? Well, we wanna make sure that every product that we produce uh, has actives in them, in those products at clinical levels, meaning they were tested, uh, there were clinical trials run, and those um, ingredients at those levels had certain efficacies. So we ensure that every one of our products has those um, at those levels that the clinical trials were done. Couple other ones, biocompatible, bioavailable, and bioactive are also important words in our philosophy. Biocompatible simply means that our bodies recognize the molecular structure of what it is that we're putting on or in the products and then putting on the skin. So if our bodies didn't recognize the molecule and that specific ingredient, um, there's reactions potentially, inflammation, irritation. So that's counter to what we're trying to achieve. So that biocompatibility thing is a huge part of what we're all about. Bioavailability really close uh, correlation to biocompatibility. We want to ensure that those not, are not only biocompatible ingredients, but that the, the bodies can absorb them and utilize them. We want those things to be assimilated so they can have the effects that we want. Last one there is bioactive. What does that mean? Well, it means that our bodies have natural biological functions so collagen synthesis, for example, is a natural biological function. Melanogenesis is one. Melanogenesis is one of those ones that we don't, we want to reverse, but collagen synthesis, we want to stimulate. So there are certain actives like growth factors and peptides that can stimulate our body's natural biological uh, activity. So we can boost things like collagen synthesis. And then the last part to tell you in all this philosophy is that we design and seek out these things so whether we're doing them in-house or we work with a, you know, we've got very close relationships with different biotech companies in Europe and places like Korea and Japan. So we work very closely with those companies to ensure that we can get what we want and deliver what we want for the consumer. Moving on. So let's jump straight into delivery technologies. So we're creating these amazing, uh, innovative and efficacious ingredients we want to ensure that we can optimize their performance. So without encapsulation, putting anything on your skin, there's going to be some degradation and some dilution of that ingredient. So creating delivery systems that improve the stability, the penetration, the bioavailability, and, and then prevent that uh, degradation component I was mentioning, make these ingredients that much more effective. So there are many options depending on our goals. And what I, mean, what I mean by goals is we want to target specific things that happen in different layers of the skin. So melanin, for example, if we want to break down melanin, that's in the stratum cordium in the, in the epidermis. We also, if we want to target keratinocytes, that's in the epidermis. So we don't want a vehicle that takes those actives beneath the uh, epidermis because they're going to miss their mark. So if we want to do something deeper, like boost mitochondrial function, or we want to stimulate collagen synthesis, we need to take a vehicle deeper into the dermis to where it can release its payload, where it's going to be most active. So that's what I mean, depending on the goals. So the, 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 uh, these uh, delivery sort of components, these molecules you see in front of you, these are different membranes. And depending again on what we want to achieve, could be a polylactic acid, glycolic acid copolymer, which tends to be better for deeper penetration, alginate, 
which are different kinds of algaes, um, lipids, uh, which could be plant derived, marine derived, uh, also nanoparticle clusters to even ligand peptide membranes. So I'll expound on a ligand peptide membrane in a couple of minutes, because I'm sure most of you haven't heard of those, but very, very exciting technology. Then there's also dual and multi-encapsulation technologies. Well, what does that mean? So you see the membranes here. Underneath the membrane is an active ingredient. So the idea is for the vehicle to penetrate the skin, dissolve, release the active. So when it's dual or multi, you've got the outer membrane, then some actives. You've got another membrane under that set of actives with additional actives underneath. So we don't really use too much multi. We do use some dual. Uh, dual. Um, we tend to want to do, if we're targeting specific things, and that, let's say we want a multi-action product, sometimes we do use dual, but typically we'll put three or four of these vehicles in that, depending on what we're trying to achieve. Richard, can I interject for one second, please? I just want to let everyone on the um, webinar know that please put your questions in the chat box, because at the end of the webinar, we're going to have a Q&A with Richard, so you can um, type in your questions because I know there'll be so many questions that we'll want to get answered. So make sure you type them in or you can, we can unmute you at the end of the um, presentation to have a live chat with Richard as well. Thank you. So this is a very simple illustration of how these delivery vehicles work. So you'll see the different kind of clear bubbles. Those are the delivery vehicles going into the epidermis. So on the left, you'll see the one illustrations releasing um, the active ingredients in the epidermis. The middle and the uh, far right are going deeper, releasing active materials um, in, into the dermis. So this is a better, uh, the next couple of slides, I'm gonna show you better exactly how this works. This is the most advanced kind of encapsulation one can do. These are the lig uh, ligon peptide um, membranes, you've got a polylactic acid, glycolic acid, copolymer shell. And then you've got these little tentacle looking things on the outside of that. Those are these ligo, ligand peptides. So this is called intelligent encapsulation. So the reason why those are there, which I'll show you in the next slide, is so first of all, they're, they're cell signaling. Also, they worked with, with, work with our biological receptors uh, in different parts of the, the cells. So depending on what we're trying to do, um, these ligand peptides will, will differ slightly. But the idea is, um, which I'm again going to show you on the next cell, is for the uh, vehicle to penetrate through the epidermis with ease and then get to a deeper level. Which I'll, this slide will show you. So you see on the upper right, that's a normal encapsulation uh, vehicle. So that will penetrate the epidermis and depending on what the uh, membrane's made of, it'll release the active materials in the area of the skin that we want. An intelligent capsule, which is the upper right with those little, again, tentacles, the idea of those is to work with the cell receptors so the vehicle actually attaches itself to the cell, penetrates the membrane of the cell. That's the first ligand peptide. This is the reason why this has got two. The second ligand peptide is meant to attach itself to the mitochondria and then release the active material in the mitochondria. So this particular active, we are not using at the moment because we've been researching this for about a year or 18 months with this encapsulation technology. It is going to be released later this year in a retail product and a pro uh, professional product. But the illustration at the bottom shows you the cell penetration and then the delivery of the, uh, of the actives um, to the mitochondria. Very, very exciting technology. And this gives you, uh, just, just further from the previous slide, this is a uh, penetration gradient illustration. So you see the different layers of the skin. So a regular vehicle delivers just fine into the upper two areas of the skin, um, you know, depending on, again, what we want. But if we want to target cells, then the intelligent encapsulation works so much better. If you look at the bases of each of these, you see how much more of the active material we're actually getting into the cell versus the regular encapsulation technology. And this is fantastic technology here that shows exactly how this works. This is called confocal microscopy imagery. And it's the most advanced uh, penetration profiling um, 
imagery available. It's extremely expensive technology. The predecessor to this was fluorescent, uh, fluorescence mis uh, microscopy, which was effective, but not, not at this level. Um, and, and that used ink. So there was some accuracy issues, whereas this is super accurate. You'll see at the top of the epidermis, the uh, application of the material. Um, you'll see within two hours, the depth of penetration, six hours, and then 16 hours, it's all assimilated. So great, great uh, imagery here. So let's jump straight into some of these ingredients. And uh, the first one is hyaluronic acid. I know all of you are saying, come on, Richard, I was expecting some super amazing science here. What is, why is hyaluronic acid here? It's an important ingredient. For starters, it's very clean if, it's, if the source of it is right. It's a great base for our elementals, has incredible efficacies, but keep in mind, and the reason why I brought this into this, because this is a big part of what we do. So not all, all hyaluronic acids are created equal, in fact, far from it. So the, the source of the, or the origin of the raw material, is it, is it uh, animal, is it plant, is it synthesized? So plant, um, the molecular recognition of plant is way better. Uh, production methodology, I mentioned the molecular recognition in the slide here. Um, and so the, if we have better molecular recognition, we're gonna have way better, uh, the biocompatible thing and the bioavailability thing that we talked about earlier, very important. So we buy from a German company called Evonik based in Hamburg, Germany. They produce the absolute best hyaluronic acid in the world. Um, they have numerous patents on their technology and their fermentation technologies. Uh, that deliver this. And you might ask, well, why doesn't everybody use the best thing? Well, there are cost implications. People want to use cheaper stuff. And there's tons and tons and tons of cheap stuff from China and India and other countries as well. Um, so the, the blend of, or, or the types of hyaluronic acid we use from, from Ivonic, we, we start with an ultra low molecular rate. What does that mean exactly? It means the molecule size, how small it is. The penetration of this ultra low molecular weight is just so rapid. And in fact, it, it penetrates so rapidly, you almost have no surface value. So we actually blend it with a medium high, which I'll go into in a second. But the ultra low molecular weight creates incre really incredible hydration levels, also plumps the skin, it decreases wrinkles and rejuvenates skin elasticity. So it's a fantastic molecule they have in your skin and also really healthy for your skin too. So the medium high weight allows for a little bit more surface value. So even using it on home use with your fingertips, you want a couple minutes to kind of rub something in before it's all gone. So this allows that. It also forms a 3D breathable layer on the surface of the skin. I know some of you might see say, oh my God, a foam on the surface of my skin, it's going to flake or it's going to not allow my skin to breathe. Well, it does allow your skin to breathe and it actually helps with hydration retention. So, and by the way, with this layer on there, it is silky smooth, it's matte. You don't even know it's on there. Your skin just looks and feels better. So that also improves hydration um, while allowing the skin to breathe. Also boosts skin elasticity and it improves texture and barrier function. So very important ingredients in one of our key base raw materials for our entire elemental serum range. Another one, C, <laughs> vitamin C, you might think, Richard, here's another one, what, why vitamin C? Well, I think we all know what vitamin C is. We've all tried it. It's in, you know, it so many different products. It's been around for a long time. And theoretically, vitamin C is one of the best ingredients we can use. And when I say theoretically, because the, the issue with it has always been efficacy and stability, which are both hindered when using pure forms of vitamin C, like L-ascorbic acid. I'm sure over the years, we've all seen things in Sephora and Ulta and other places, even on Amazon, I've seen it, you know, where it says 15% vitamin C level or 18% or 20%. They're talking about L-ascorbic acid. And I will guarantee you within a month or two of the time those things are on shelf, you open them up, they're going to be brown or like this amber color. And that's just what L-ascorbic acid does. It oxidizes rapidly. And when it's brown, there's no efficacy. In fact, you're probably going to put an irritant on your skin that will create irritation and inflammation. So um, it's if you can use L-ascorbic acid without getting 
exposed to oxygen for long. I, ideally, if it was aseptic and you had a single serving, you can put it in a little dish or in the palm of your hand, add a few drops of hyaluronic acid or another you know, clean liquid, and then apply it to your skin as a, like a paste or a thin or a heavy serum. You would get great efficacy for a couple of minutes, but the more it's exposed to oxygen, the faster it oxidizes. So even the raw material, which is also hygroscopic, so if you get any drip a couple drops of water in there, that induces um, the oxidation as well. So it's just not a practical material to use. So there are also um, numerous derivative and synthetic forms, um, but the, you know historically those have been shown to have low biocompatibility and bioavailability, so not great. So one of our partners in, in uh, Europe that we work with, um, we found a solution to all this. Blending ascorbic acid with glutathione, which is an amino acid, and then conjugating them to gold micro, sub-microparticles, reducing the particle size, kind of creating a nanoparticle drone cluster out of the trio, if you will, resulted in a phenomenal active ingredient with better penetration, biocompatibility, bioavailability, release, efficacy, stability, and the best part with no degradation. So They've tested this, even something that's been an incubation simulation of two years, they've applied it to the skin. They've also tested it outside and there's no degradation in the raw material. It's still fully intact and fully active. So this is an unbelievable technology and a game changer uh, for pure vitamin C. Moving on to another exciting topic, plant cells. So plant cells are not new. In fact, plant stem cells um, were all the hype, you know, a decade ago and, and were for many years and to some extent still are. So although super exciting, they underperformed and underdelivered, especially comparing them to peptides and growth factors, which everybody did back in, you know, when they were launched. Um, so there is newer technology in how these uh, plant cells are harvested, cell isolation and processing technologies, and particularly utilizing biofermentation and I know a lot of you will think biofermentation. I mean, I, I've made pickles at home before, you know, cabbage, that kind of stuff. This is totally different. This is materials put in a bioreactor, materials derived from plant sources, and then kind of fed in, in perfect temperatures, things that will help them grow other kinds of molecules and cells. So ultimately what comes out of this technology is potent uh, molecules, which are proteins, peptides, growth factors, and again, all created from uh, various plant sources. And so these materials deliver clinically validated efficacies that the predecessors, not only that the predecessors lacked, but that are comparable and better to the most potent known peptides and growth factors, which is super exciting news for us people who are really into kind of natural beauty and cleaner beauty. I don't, if I don't have to use anything synthesized, I don't want to. So here is one of those materials. Bioplacenta, this is one of our most important ingredients and uh, actually our best seller in a retail product and a best seller in a professional product. So why bio and why placenta? Well, bio simply indicates it's bioengineered. Placenta, we use that because scientists have confirmed through testing what a placenta is made up of. And I think we all know what a placenta is, but just for those that, that don't or unsure, Think of it as a temporary organ with the sole purpose of feeding nutrients to a growing baby in the womb. So it, you know, when the baby's born and the placenta comes out with it, it's, it pretty much dies off pretty rapidly. So you'd never think about using placenta on your skin, whether it's from a human or from a sheep. So, and it would have no activity if you did, but utilizing patented technology, uh, and again, through this unique fermentation technology, which we call hyperfermentation, it yields a plethora of different growth factors, peptides, amino acids, vitamins, and minerals, and they're similar qualitative and quantitative to live placenta. What excites me most about this are the growth factors. Growth factors are so hard to isolate and produce the traditional or old fashioned way of making epidermal growth factors was using E. coli, which uh, is a bacteria from poo. So I don't really like the idea of putting that on my skin. It's also known as, as an irritant and uh, you know, it's an inflammatory um, thing, but it, there's no question it's highly efficacious. It's what 
uh, cosmetic surgeons will use um, to grow new skin on burn victims. But this particular technology yields epidermal growth factors, insulin growth factors one, acidic fibroblast growth factors, basic fibroblast uh, growth factors, and uh, epithelial uh, growth factors, as well as I mentioned the peptides, amino acids, and vitamins. So this incredible batch of or assortment of molecules um, that come from these plant sources and through this bioengineering technology using biofermentation uh, have potent rejuvenate, rejuve, rejuvenation efficacies that include boosting collagen and elastin, slowing thinning of aging skin, reducing wrinkles, toning, firming, and improving skin elasticity. Another one of our uh, exciting ingredients and, and favorites, a um, little bit misunderstood, but it's uh, Biden's Pelosa extract. So what is that exactly? Well, we all know what retinol is, and I think we've all probably had some uh, experience with retinol. So without hesitation, I'll tell you, retinol is a very efficacious ingredient, particularly if used in strengths that uh, require uh, are required to, to create those efficacies. The problem with retinol is it's an irritant, it's an uh, anti-inflammatory, or it's an uh, inflammation-causing ingredient, um, and it creates photosensitivity in the skin. So this is a plant-derived retinol alternative. So it has very much the same efficacies, which include skin rejuvenation, cell renewal, balance and balancing and evening skin tones, skin brightening and lightening. The way retinol works, retinol binds itself to something called the RxR receptor, um, which is, it basically increases cell growth. So Biden's Pelosa extract does exactly the same thing and it incre increases cell growth by 119%. And that's comparable in, in many cases better than pure retinol. Retinol also binds itself to something called the retinoic acid receptor. And what typically happens with that, and this is where inflammation and irritation comes from, it causes irritation and inflammation, surprise, surprise. So our bioretinol, our bio, um, Biden's Pelosa extract, we kind of named it bioretinol, reduces this by more than 20%. So it doesn't create the inflammation and irritation. It also doesn't create pho uh, photosensitivity. So it's, um, you, you're still fine going out, uh, you know, in light or, or the sun, obviously we all recommend using sunscreens no matter what, but again, it doesn't create that photosensitivity so it doesn't worsen the exposure to the sun. Another super exciting ingredient, I know it doesn't sound like it by the name, <laughs> Pinus, Pinaster Bark Extract, also called Pycnogenol. This is just an incredible ingredient. Company in France, um, you sort of discovered this ingredient a couple of decades ago and have done just extensive research. They've got so many clinical trials and just rooms and rooms of white papers on this material. So it's derived from the French pine bark. So that particular bark, you think of pine trees, oh, it must be the same everywhere. It isn't. This one is extremely unique. They've tested uh, cells from different kinds of bark and different other components from different pine trees around the world. And, and none of the other trees have this ingredient. So these trees are only grown in one area in France. It's Northwest France. And there's a particular climate there that seems to be conducive uh, to these kinds of trees. But, um, you know, something important to mention again is that the, uh, you know, nature, if you think of plants, plant cells and DNA are closely linked to human and animal cells and DNA. So no surprise that plant material origin tends to be more biocompatible with us humans. So this ingredient is no different. It's got fantastic skin penetration and assimilation properties without even modifying it, meaning we don't have to change the molecule size or we don't have to encapsulate it. It is penetrated so easy on its own. And some of the efficacies include Accelerated uh, wound healing, hydrates the skin. It's a potent antioxidant, acts as an anti-pollutant agent as well, protects collagen and elastin, nourish the, nourishes the skin. And I also love this last part, it helps balance microbiome as well. 
Moving on to the next ingredient, this is niacin and reg, red sage extract. And the sole purpose of this ingredient is to deal with glycation. Well, what is glycation? For those that you that know, a little refresher for those that don't, uh, this is <laughs> enlightening. So it's an, the insidious process in which sugar molecules attach themselves to protein and lipid molecules, forming harmful new molecules called advanced glycation end products. Ironically, ages for short, right? <laughs> so these new molecules create hardening of the fibroblasts and that induces wrinkles, dryness of skin, reduced thickness, loss of elasticity, dermal and epidermal atrophy, reduced rate of epidermal cell proliferation and cellular senescence. And by the way, glycation is pretty much the same as plaque. Plaque in your arteries that block your blood flow that can cause strokes and heart attacks. Also in your brain, plaque in your brain, guess what it causes? I'm sure we we're all uh, have that answer. Yes, it's a precursor to Alzheimer's. So it's the same plaque guys. So the more, as we age, the more sugar we have in our bodies and, and you know, depending on what kind of fats and proteins we're, we're um, consuming, this is a, it truly is an insidious process. That's the right word for it. So the combination of our niacin and red, uh, red sage extract, which is also encapsulated because we want to deliver this to one place, the fibroblasts, and the vehicle delivers the material, it, it um, releases it, and then it immediately, immediately goes to work at breaking down that glycation. And this ingredient we buy in from a very big um, German uh, pharmaceutical and uh, personal care company called uh, BASF. They've done phenomenal clinic, clinical testing on this as well. And the clinical testing has shown reversal 20 years of glycation in four months of use, giving new life and elasticity to fibroblasts and skin. And interestingly, a few weeks ago, I was in In Cosmetics Global in Paris, which is the biggest ingredient and in technology show in the world. And glycation has been, everything I've just told you has been known for a while. For some reason, these big ingredient houses have kind of left it alone or just haven't figured out a way to deal with it. But this year, I found it interesting. There are three or four new ingredients. Um, so that was interesting. What wasn't so interesting is they didn't show great efficacy. So I'm not sure why they launched them. This is still the best ingredient um, that I know of that any ingredient house is producing. Moving on to the next ingredient. I know this is going to be a mouthful, but hexycarboxymethyl dipeptide 12. So this is kind of a designer peptide created to deal with one thing, one thing only, and that's autophagy. So what is autophagy? Some may know, some may not, but autophagy is absolutely critical and, and having an understanding of it is equally critical. So it's a natural biological process in which the body cells remove unnecessary or dysfunctional components. So think of it as cleaning out a dirty house or a dirty laundry or you know, in this case, the cells cleaning out damaged or, or dead parts within them. So it's essential for the maintenance, maintenance of cellular homeostasis and for the orchestration of an efficient cellular response to stresses. So de a decrease in autophagic activity in cells, obviously that slows as we age and more rapidly than we would like through lifestyle. So enhancement of autophagic activity is, is absolutely imperative. And it also de helps decelerate the aging progression by stimulating continuous renewal of the cellular proteome and damaged proteins that are no longer functional. So while doing research on autophagy, a good friend of ours, a brilliant uh, Korean scientist named Dr. Keaton Park, I've known him for about a decade, he discovered a peptide, he created boosted sirtuin one And you might ask what sirtuin one is. It's a very, very important enzyme that our bodies produce. And if any of you are familiar with the name David Sinclair, he's a famous Harvard scientist that became famous when he announced on uh, 60 Minutes, oh, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, something like that, that resveratrol in mice was shown to boost sirtuin one Ultimately, it has an age reversal reaction on mice. So it didn't, it didn't pan out exactly that way in humans, so, but he continued the research and he's found new ingredients 
um, that have even better effects. Well, on humans, they have similar effects that the, that the resveratrol had on mice. This is one of these peptides that he's currently testing. It's not for supplemental use. It's only topical at this point, but there's some other um, things that he's testing that are incredibly good at boosting CERT1. Anyway, this enzyme that boosts, it boosts autophagic activity. It increases mitochondrial function, reduces oxidative stress. And then again, like with everything I've talked about, there's clinical testing on everything and not just, you know, a four or six week test. This goes on for in some cases a few years. And this is one of those ingredients that he's tested for a couple of years, again, with incredible efficacies. So moving on to the last one, this is another one you might think, oh, no, no, Richard, we have all the science. Now we're back to sort of not so exciting. Well, this is exciting as well. So I think we all know superfoods are potentially good for us. You know, richly, deeply, darkly colored things like blueberries, kale, spinach, chard, all of those things are just off the charts as far as their nutrient content, especially when they're organic and freshly picked. Those deep color um, fruits and vegetables, most of those nutrients are in the pigments. And what, what um, a lot of ingredient houses have found over the years is that it's hard to process these things and have whatever, whatever you get out of processing, whether it's a powder or a liquid or whatever, it's hard to get these nutrients to kind of transfer over. So a Japanese company also that has several patents on their technology kind of created almost a freeze drying like process from freshly picked harvested stuff to the actual process. And they would end up with these amazing powders. And I was excited when I first met them because the powders were brightly colored like the fruits and vegetables. And about a decade ago, when I first became interested in trying to incorporate superfoods into our skincare products, uh, a supplier here in the US based on the East Coast gave me some superfood powders. And when I got them, I called up the general manager, his name's Jim. I said, Jim, these powders are all white. Where, where's the pigment? He says, well, that's, that's what happens in processing. Of course they're white. And so ultimately we tested the materials out and they really had no detectable or at least active detectable nutrients. We, we tested for um, anthocyanins, for example, and they are traceable. So to give you an example, anthocyanins, the chemical that makes blueberries good for you, and they happen to be in the pigment of the blueberries. So without the pigment, there's no anthocyanins. That's the case with most of these potent uh, you know, phytonutrients. So the Japanese also created testing technology. So a fresh blueberry, freshly organic, um, you know, just harvested blueberry would be in the region of you know, 27, 28% anthocyanin content. So these powders these Japanese came up with were always, every test in every batch was between 25 and 26%. So very, very close to what, uh, you know, the freshly harvested uh, organic material had. So cut a long story short, this unique processing methodology they use preserves all of these uh, potent phytonutrients. So things like polyphenols, flavonoids, anthocyanins, phytoestrogens, terpenoids, and carotenoids, and others are all present and very close to how they would be um, in their natural state. So these things have fantastic bioavailability and biocompatibility, as you can imagine, because the molecular recognition, and they have numerous skin benefits from nourishing the cells to boosting skin defense against free radicals and other environmental aggressors to also promoting a healthy microbiome. So we tend to use a lot of these in our live line. Um, and even though you know that line's been out for several years, still very exciting to me, particularly for people who want you know, natural and naturally derived or organic skincare. So with that, we're going to jump straight into questions. Um, yeah, thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, everybody. I know we probably all have um, so many questions. Uh, that's a lot of information to, to process, and we haven't been studying it for years and years and years the way Richard has. But um, I think probably you're going to have questions about what products some of these ingredients are in. So I'm going to... Um, if you have any questions in the chat box, I don't see, I know I had a question earlier about really kind of 
how do we break it down? How do we break down some of these ingredients in our um, to our clients so they can understand them a little better? And what products yield some of these um, key ingredients that you discussed? Hey, Dory, do you want to put our cameras back on? Yes. Let me go back to here. Did you get it? Yes. Okay. I'm not sure if anybody can see me. I yeah. see my cameras on. I just don't see myself there. I, but yeah. Um, yeah, so Dory, do you want me to answer the first one? Yes, please. Yeah, I think in our training material, um, you know, I, I, for starters, let me just say, I tried to kind of keep this as simple as possible. I get excited about the science. So mm -hmm. sometimes I'll throw in some things that um, don't need to be, but it's just my own exuberance about this category and, and what we have in front of us. But in our training materials, we've kind of simplified it as much as we can to where, but it still yields a good punch as far as market, marketing and um, you know, most importantly, it's put in a way that people can understand it. So we have some of that stuff uh, available and we would absolutely, if you're not happy with that, we'll, we'll work with you to shape it to how you would like it for your clients. As far as which ingredients or which products, we can go right to the front of the hyaluronic acid is pretty much in all of our serums. That's that exact mix, mixture I told you. Dory, can you mute those people? Yes, I, I did. And um, yeah, so that's in all of our serums. Um, the vitamin C is in our C fusion. The bioplacenta is in our bioplacenta and rejuvenating serum. The pycnogenol is in our biofortify. The niacin and red sage is also in our biofortify, both retail and professional. The professional has slightly higher amounts of them. The ingredient that's meant to be released into the mitochondria, which we haven't named yet, that is yet to be launched. We will be launching two products. One will be professional use. It'll be in a, a serum ampule and it's going to be called Mitochondria Boost. The other one will be a retail product called Cell CPR, which will have that active ingredient as well as a couple of others, but just tons of that kind of technology. The peptide, the dipeptide is currently in Bioplacenta. That will also be in the new um, Mitochondria Boost. will also be in the new Cell CPR. The superfoods are in all of our live products. And Dory, oh, the, the Biden's Pelosa extract, mm -hmm. which is the uh, bioretinol, that's in our product called bioretinol, both professional and retail. I think I covered them all. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much, Richard. And I also have a question on when to, um, to use biofortify versus bioplacenta since they're both great for anti-aging how can i better determine which product is most appropriate both for retail and um for nano very good question um look i would uh if if you they're fantastic if you can use them together you can layer these things you can also put them in the palm of your hand together and put them all on because of our unique encapsulation technology all of those molecules will be delivered. But if someone doesn't want to do that and because of the cost implication or whatever, I would, I would say use BioFortify. If you just want to use one of each once a day, I would say use BioFortify in the day just because of the benefits you get from the pycnogenol. And that will still work on the breaking down glycation because of the great penetration of the niacin and red sage. And then use the bioplacenta at night. But I still like in my personal um, routine. I use them both every day so together, <laughs> together morning and night because I want to maximize uh, the benefits, especially at night with the niacin and red sage. I love the idea of sleeping, knowing that's in my fibroblast breaking down that glyc uh, uh, glycation. Yeah, I agree, Richard. I use, I can't live without my, I use rejuvenation or bi bioplacenta. Um, and biofortify daily. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, so, and they can both be nanoed in. Um, I think, you know, you can even mix them together to nano in, or you can put the biofortify on first and then nano in the, the bioplacenta. Either one, they would both be amazing, Morgan. So, 
Thank you, Richard. We have another question. Um, clients that are melasma prone, what would you recommend treatment wise regarding nano treatments during summer and what prevents, what products prevent furthering pigmentation? Yeah, without hesitation, this is an easy one. I would recommend our luminous ser serum first. And what's, what's so amazing about the luminous product is that we talked about the encapsulation and this is one of the products that's got a couple of the dual encapsulated um, uh, membranes and, and vehicles in them. And the reason why, if you think about the whole uh, melanogenesis, melasma, pigmentation disorders as a whole, it's a process of you know, several different things. A tyrosinase um, activation, we wanna inhibit that. The melanogenesis process, we wanna inhibit that. We wanna break down the melanin that's in, um, in the epidermis and we want to slow down the process of it reoccurring because anytime we get exposed to light, the body just goes boom, biological reaction needs to produce pigment to protect the skin. So sometimes even other kinds of lights will stimulate that, not just sunlight, so keep that in mind. But yes, that particular product will uh, prohibit all of that. And with any pigmentation, by the way, it's time, guys. It just, it's, this is not something you can put on the surface of the skin and it strips your skin and wipes out pigment. It's not hydroquinone, it's not toxic, it's not harsh but it will work. You just have to give it time. And by the way, since you asked the question of nanoing it, that is the fastest way to get that in there, especially breaking up surface melanin. Um, having several treatments with that will break that up way more rapidly than just putting on um, the serum on top of the skin. But that number one, the C fusion will also contribute to that as will the bioretinol in helping that process. But luminous is a standalone would be the most potent defense against all of that. And I think I would like to add in too, the bioretinol, because it does not cause a, a photosensitivity of um, right, you know, traditional retinol, that's very helpful because typically in you know, the Central Valley, um, in a lot of other hot places, you can't um, use retinol in the summer or in the warm months or anything like that, but bioretinol does not cause that photosensitivity. Yeah, that's one of the problems I have, and Dr. Roskin has the same problem. We've discussed this for a decade about retinol, as good as it is, it just makes the skin so photosensitive. So although there's some effectiveness at helping with pigmentation, ultimately you get it all back, if not worse, because of the photosensitivity. So, and you can't stay in for two weeks after using it, right? No. So it just, to me, it's just an old fashioned dinosaur, you know, ingredient that we don't need. I, again, good. I acknowledge all the efficacies. I know how good it is. I know dermatologists still recommend it, very aggressive retinol. But if you think about all the contra, um, you know, things with it, it's just, to me, it's just not worth using. And I've, I've never been a fan of it, even before I know what I know now. Yeah, there's better, there's just better technologies now. Yeah. Um, I have another question. Does the HABHA cause photosensitivity? Um, well, you know, Dory, you, you'll know this answer as well. Any acid you put on creates a little bit of it. It's not so much photosensitivity. It's not going to cause additional uh, sort of a pigmentation reaction or melanogenesis reaction. Anytime you put an acid on your skin, as mild as those are, there is some tingling and slight burning and slight, I don't even want to say discomfort, but you know you've had something on your skin. So the next day you'll notice a little bit, but way, way less than, than a retinoid, for example. And we also, you know, in our perfecting serum in our um, AHA, BHA retail uh, size, we use the Mandelic, Lactic, and um, a tiny bit of sal. And those, uh, Mandelic is a larger molecule. It's, it really doesn't cause sensitivity at all. So I think that- we, Yeah, it's way gentler on the surface of the uh -huh. skin. So yeah. way less than typical HAs. Yeah, absolutely. These are great questions, guys. Does anybody else have any questions they want to um, add? Okay, here's one. Have you done any research or considered Bacuchiol? We do use some Bacuchiol in, um, in our bioretinol. Yeah. It's in their clinical uh, levels. So that's like a support mechanism for the bioretinol itself. It does have some retinoid-like activities, although far less than the Biden's Pelosa extract. But yeah, we like it. And that's currently in uh, bioretinol as well. Good questions. 
guys are giving great questions. Um, um, let's see if I've covered them all. Is there anybody else that would like to add uh, questions about a specific product or ingredients or application? I don't have any right now. So uh, hopefully we've answered all those questions and we did record this and we I kept um, the recording going during these que this question period. So you can go back and, and see the questions as well. But if you think of anything that you forgot to ask, please reach out. You can always reach out to Richard at Skin Modern, or you can reach out to myself, Dory, D-O-R-I-E at Skin Modern and we will get those answers for you. I hope that you are all on the webinar next month. We are also going to be doing the um, perfect pair talking about nano fusion compared with our new, um, in, in conjunction, not compared, but in conjunction with our ultra fusion. And I also want to really encourage you all to go to Vegas where you can have a free treatment if you sign up. There'll be an invite coming out soon where you can sign up, you can meet, uh, Richard Purvis, you can meet Dr. Frank Roskin. We'll be teaching a class there. We'll be doing um, free training. And so it's really important. If you can make the Vegas year this year, it's going to be amazing. Oh, I have one more question. Mm -hmm. um, I have oily and acne skin and I just ordered the uh, Phytofusion to test out. Are the oil-based serums not great for my skin type? Well, that's a very good question. And I think it's, everybody has the, um, the idea that adding more oil to oily skin is a problem. And, and yes, it generally is. I would say in the case of Phytofusion, that's the exception to the rule. And here's why. And not just because we have that product. Those oils that make up Phytofusion are all incredibly absorbing and, and the biocompatibility and assimilation are so high in those. Um, and they also have tons of polyphenols in them. So they have fantastic skin benefits. I would just say, um, keep the amount of it low just because your natural process is to produce more oil. So this will help hydrate the skin, but interestingly, it also will help balance your current biological, uh, you know, oil production and, and sebum, all that stuff. It'll kind of help regulate it. Also helps regulate what's on the surface. So your microbiome will be healthier using it. You may also want to consider trying our Clarify. That's a great ingredient with some of that encapsulation technology we talked about. Um, some of those vehicles deliver actives into the dermis to deal with things like um, the sebum, not just the uh, biological process of creating excess sebum, but also the um, allowing that sebum to come to the surface. There's something else in there as well that'll clean out uh, pores, you don't get the, the dead cell buildup in there, which causes the actual sort of <laughs> volcanoes, if you will, on the skin. Yeah. Um, that also helps with the microbiome. So the combination of those two can be fantastic for you. Yeah, I'm obsessed with Phytofusion. I always tell everyone, I also even use it in my hair because it has 16 different oils. It's wonderful. So um, beautiful product. Um, I have another question. Um, are these products oncology safe? Yes, they are for sure. Everything in our line is non-toxic. So um, just you can you can be assured that they're going to be safe to use on everyone. Um, you're going to want to still choose skin appropriate ones for whatever client you're working with, but all the products are non-toxic. Okay. Um, oh, that was just another comment by Morgan. <laughs> yes, she, with Kim and Morgan both agree how amazing Phytofusion is. I do too. Is there anything else anyone would like to ask? Well, I think maybe that we, if you think of anything else, please submit those to us. Like I said, you can go to help at Skin Modern, Richard at Skin Modern, Dory at Skin Modern, any of those, and we will be happy to get back with you with any questions you have about um products, ingredients, how to get started with Skin Modern, how to set up your uh, your professional account, um, anything that we've got going on, videos, or because we record all our videos. So any questions that you have or anything that you need help with, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. We're here to help and help you to grow your business and be the most successful you that you can be. So please let us know how we can do that. 
And thank you so much, everyone, for joining today. We look forward to seeing you in Las Vegas and on our uh, next webinars. So thank you so much again, Richard, for <laughs> all your incredible knowledge uh, that you teach. I learn something new every time I listen. <laughs> so it, it's- You're welcome, Doreen. You continue to absorb it. So thank you so much. Everybody have a wonderful day. And thank you so much for attending. Bye. Thank you.